15 minute or less lecture series, anatomy, chapter 14, the cardiovascular system, the blood vessels. Blood vessels form a closed circulatory system, all in a big circle flowing in and out of each other. The blood travels away from the heart through arteries, then passes through tiny arterioles and finally microscopic capillaries, going from large to small. And then the blood returns to the heart through the capillaries into the microscopic venules and finally the veins, going from small to large. Uh, angiogenesis is the growth of new blood vessels. This can occur to heal wounds where blood vessels have been damaged, uh, formation of uterine lining after menstruation, bypass obstructed blood vessels in some minor cases, uh, creation of more uh, capillary beds in muscle tissue from exercise, and also to provide blood for the malignant tumors. So tumors can cause blood vessels to form to help them get extremely large. Uh, the blood vessels have three main layers, tunica interna, tunica media, and tunica externa. In uh, an artery, the tunica interna consists of a thin endothelium layer of simple squamous cells followed by a basement membrane. And after that, an internal elastic lamina, a sheet of elastic fibers with many, many openings. That's followed by the tunica media with smooth muscle tissue that can control the diameter of the blood vessel. And then that followed by the external elastic lamina. Again, another sheet of elastic fibers with many, many openings. These elastic fibers, of course, allow these blood vessels to stretch. Arteries are stretchy. Uh, and then finally, the outermost layer is the tunica externa, made of connective tissue, uh, elastic, uh, consisting of elastic and collagen fibers that help to hold the blood vessels in place and may even carry blood vessels along the blood vessels if the blood vessel is big enough. Woo, blew my mind. Uh, there are two main types of arteries, elastic arteries, which are the largest, they have well-defined internal and external elastic laminae, and a very thick tunica media. They help when they, uh, to propel blood forward when the ventricles relax, so they get stretched from the high blood pressure, and then when the ventricles relax, pressure, blood pressure goes down, and they return to their shape, pushing the blood onward. And then there are the muscular arteries, the mid-sized arteries. They have a very large layer of uh, tunica media layer, so they have a lot of smooth muscle tissue for their size. Well defined internal elastic lamina, but a thin external elastic lamina. And they can adjust the flow rate of blood by constricting or dilating their smooth muscle tissues. And here the blood pressure is still pretty high. Uh, the uh, arteries finally break down to really small microscopic arterioles that can help to regulate blood flow in the capillaries. They have a very thin internal tunica, with a thin internal elastic lamina. They have a thin tunica media made up of one or two layers of smooth muscle cells, no external elastic lamina, and then it's basically very, very minimal structure. Uh, they uh, branch and branch until they become the very end of them, the meta-arterial that then arrives and passes to the blood capillaries. And the meta-arterial arterials have little sphincters, pre-capillary sphincters, that control the flow of blood into these capillaries. Um, and then this brings us to the capillaries. Capillaries are the smallest of the blood vessels. They're just one simple thin layer of simple squamous endothelium and its basement membrane. No tunica media, no tunica externa. And this allows for microcircuitory exchange, exchange between the tissues and the capillaries, or exchange between the capillaries and the air in the lungs. There are three kinds of capillaries. The continuous capillaries, which basically are tubes of endothelial cells with little clefts or spaces between the cells that allow materials to pass through. Uh, also, materials can be passed through via endo and exocytosis. Um, this is referred to as penocytosis, uh, fluids passing through the cells themselves. And the continuous capillaries are the most common. Then there's the fenestrated capillaries. They have the intercellular clefts. They have penocytosis. And they also have small uh, passageways through the endothelial cells themselves called fenestrations. Um, these are found in places such as kidneys and the small intestine, etc. There's a large frequent passage of materials into and or out of the bloodstream. And then finally, there are the sinusoids, the rarest of the capillaries. They are wider than regular blood capillaries. They have extremely large fenestrations. Often their uh, basement membrane is incomplete or even and how do they stay together? And they are found in the red bone marrow, the liver, and the spleen, where there's a significant movement of cells into and out of the bloodstream. Uh, capillary beds consist of 10 to 100 capillaries coming off of a single arteriole, the meta-arteriole, and blood flow into them are controlled by the pre-capillary sphincters of the meta-arteriole. 
there's also a through fair channel that goes straight from the mid arterial to the venule that can bypass the capillaries altogether so that blood flow isn't stopped, it is just diverted. Uh, venules. Venules are the smallest of the vein like structures. Blood passes to the heart. They have very, very thin walls with the minimal uh, interna, tunica interna and externa, and maybe or maybe not tunica media, maybe mostly muscle tissue. There are two types of venules the post capillary venules. Post capillary venules come directly after the thoracic junction. They are basically single, simple squamous endothelial tube with an extra. Uh, they come uh, allow for microcirculatory exchange, so they also allow fluids to exchange between the tissues and the uh, postcapillary venules. After that is followed by the muscular venules. Muscular venules have a tunica media, have uh, two to three cell layers of smooth muscle cells and a very tiny amount of tunica externa. Both of these venules are very distendable, can stretch, and they end up acting as a blood reservoir. So about 64% of all of our blood are actually in these venules. Very bizarre. Uh, then we get to the veins. Venules come together, fuse together from the larger vessels, the veins. The veins have a tunica interna, except it lacks the internal elastic lamina. It has a tunica media, except it lacks an external elastic lamina. And the tunica media has a very little smooth muscle tissue. It does have it, but very little. Overall, the lumen, the space within a vein, is wider than in arteries, and the walls are thinner. And this is because veins have to function under low blood pressure. Also, veins have little valves, where there's three little pockets of tissue that come out and are preventing the backflow of blood within the veins, again, because of low blood pressure. These valves look kind of like the semilunar valves little pockets that when the blood tries to backflow, it fills those pockets and prevents the blood from backing up. So here you can see one of those. Uh, blood flow through the veins is so um, limited, it cannot overcome gravity. So what the veins need is to be positioned between skeletal muscles so that when the muscles contract, they'll squeeze the veins, causing the blood to head toward the heart, or from breathing, causing the uh, expansion of lungs and the lungs pushing on the um, thoracic cage to squeeze veins, causing blood to flow toward the heart. Uh, sometimes the veins, the valves become uh, insufficient. They only partially close and blood will start to back up into the veins. And this can lead to a painful condition called varicose veins. Uh, anastomies, these are unions of blood vessels. Blood vessels that are supplying the same area and form sort of a network of blood vessels that uh, transfer blood between themselves. Uh, sometimes the anastomies are useful because they can compensate for obstructions, either temporary or permanent, allowing blood to get around it and supplying all the body. Coronary circulation, as we know, is needed to provide nutrients and oxygen to the heart itself. Pulmonary circulation, as we know, is sending blood to the lungs so that the deoxygenated blood becomes oxygenated. Uh, pulmonary circulation, as we know, the blood enters the pulmonary trunk, then splits between the right and left pulmonary arteries, go to the lung tissue to become oxygenated, then travels via the uh, pulmonary veins back into the left atria. It's worth pointing out that the color blue means the vessel is carrying deoxygenated blood, and the color red means the vessel is carrying oxygenated blood. Blood is always red. Systemic circulation, as we know, carries blood throughout the entire body. Um, the arteries carry it out to the body and the veins bring it back to the heart. And there turns out there are more veins than arteries. So here is the heart. Coming off of the heart, we have the ascending aorta, which becomes the arch of the aorta, or the arch of the aorta, and then the thoracic aorta, bringing blood down to lower parts of the body. However, the arch of the aorta also has three arteries branching off of it. The brachiocephalic trunk, the left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery. The Subcalian artery will carry blood to the upper limbs, while the uh, common carotid arteries will carry blood to the head. They will split into the external and internal carotid arteries, which can then split into the temporal arteries, the facial arteries, and so on. The brachiocephalic trunk will then split into a common carotid artery, the right common carotid artery, and the right subclavian artery. Uh, the bl blood, when it arrives in the heart, uh, head, into the head goes to the brain via either the internal carotid arteries or the vertebral arteries. Uh, they will then form what's called the cerebral arterial circle. 
where we have the vertebral arteries fusing together to form the basilar artery, which then splits into the posterior cerebral arteries. Then you have the internal carotid arteries splitting into the middle cerebral arteries and the anterior cerebral arteries. Um, and then these arteries are all connected to each other via an anterior communicating artery connecting the two anterior cerebral arteries. And the right and left posterior communicating arteries connecting the posterior cerebral arteries to the middle cerebral arteries. And this ends up forming an arterial circle, the cerebral arterial circle, to help avoid any obstructions in blood flow. And here is just another view of that circle. And here in this model, you can see the vertebral artery that will then fuse from the basilar artery. Uh, blood will then travel via the uh, brachiospinal trunk on the right side to the subclavian artery. Well, the this will then become the right axillary artery, which will then split up into a variety of arteries, including the uh, right brachial artery, which then becomes the right radial artery and the right ulnar artery. You will see this also in the left side. Um, the thoracic artery coming from the heart will then go down into the abdominal cavity, becoming the abdominal aorta. The abdominal aorta will split off into a lot of little bitty arteries, including the celiac trunk, which then splits into the left gastric artery, the splenic artery, the common hepatic artery to the liver. Uh, the abdominal aorta also has branches for the right and left renal arteries, the superior mesenteric artery going to the intestines, the inferior mesenteric artery going to the intestines, the Right and left gonadal arteries going to the gonads. And at the very inferior end of the abdominal aorta, it'll split into the right and left common iliac arteries going to the lower limbs. It'll then split into the external iliac artery and the internal iliac artery. The external iliac artery will become the femoral artery, which will then turn into the popliteal artery, becoming the posterior tibial artery, as well as the anterior tibial artery. Uh, the veins, on the other hand, have the blood coming back to the heart. So they will go by either the inferior vena cava or superior vena cava. Basically, the right and left brachiocephalic veins fuse to form superior vena cava. In the head, we have a number of sinuses, including the superior sagittal sinus and the uh, sigmoid sinus. The sinuses are basically veins that lack smooth muscle tissue. They will then fuse into the... Um, internal jugular vein and then there'll also be an external jugular vein getting blood from the uh here's the external jugular vein from around the superficial parts of the head the internal jugular vein will then fuse with the right subclavian vein become the brachiocephalic vein from the arms there is a lot of veins in the arms including deep the right and left uh, the right radial veins the left ulnar veins which are then fused to the brachial veins which will then into the uh, axillary vein, which then goes to the subclavian vein. Again, these are deep, superficial. We have the right cephalic veins and the basilic veins, which will then lead to the axillary vein as in sub subclavian veins. And there is connecting the cephalic and basilic veins, the right medium cubital vein. Uh, going up from the legs, we have the uh, left and right common iliac veins, which then become the inferior vena cava, going up to the thoracic cavity, other blood veins that come to it. Uh, include the hepatic vein. Hepatic vein is also receiving blood from the intestines via the superior mesenteric vein and the inferior mesenteric vein and the splenic vein, which all fuse into the hepatic portal vein, which goes to the liver, goes to the capillary bed, and then enters the hepatic vein, which goes into the inferior vena cava. The adult veins are not shown. Uh, so here, that all is again external and internal iliac veins going into common iliac veins, going to the inferior vena cava. Uh, and then, of course, in the legs, we have the posterior tibial vein, the right anterior tibial veins uh, that fuse to become the popliteal vein, which becomes the femoral vein. Uh, fusing with the femoral vein is the great cephaneous vein, which is superficial, and the deep femoral vein, and they will become the external iliac vein, which fuses with the internal iliac vein to become the common iliac vein, as shown here on our lovely model. Uh, portal circulation. Portal circulation was two... Uh, capillary beds are connected by a vein. This is very, very rare. We have here the hepatic portal circulation where the capillary beds in the intestines uh, fuse and end up going through the hepatic portal vein into the liver where it goes to another set of capillary beds and then enters the hepatic vein. Uh, we also find this in the head around the pituitary gland where you have the hypothesial portal system. Hypertension, high blood pressure, which is above 120 slash 180, one or both numbers can be above it, cause all kinds of problems and it can lead to death, so you better treat it if you have it.